Dr. Erhard Busak, thank you again for the honour of coming to the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy. Uh, we'd love to ask you a few questions just to go a little deeper into some of the leading issues of the conference. <coughs> Now, the first question is about youth and education. Now, you spoke about the need for responsibility for education on the EU level, as well as the, the importance of making its system more mobile and responsive to demand. Now, what are the next steps to be taken in this process, and what is your vision of the progress of the European education system in 10, uh, in ten years? I'm in general a fan of uh, the European Union and of European integration. But I think one of the main mistakes is that we have no European responsibility on education. It's still up to the nation state. Uh, and the differences between the member states and for sure outside even more uh, are quite great. So far it's extremely difficult uh, to move uh, from one national education system to the other. Uh, I think the European Union did a lot. Here I have to do very positive remarks. These are the exchange programs like Erasmus, Socrates, Leonardo and so on and so on. And a lot of students are moving there and getting mutual knowledge. Also the Bologna system to create some common rules here uh, are, are important, but they are not uh, strictly done. It is up to the different governments and still the differences are quite great. But if we are looking to the economy and if I'm looking to science and research, I think mobility is everything at this time because we have to make exchange. This is necessary for a kind of competition because competition in education, in science and research is creating uh, more results. So far a lot of things have to be done even to create capacity that the younger generation can move around where they can get jobs. Otherwise I think they are lost. Yeah, well, thank you for your insight. Um, looking at nation branding and ecotourism, which do you consider to be the main challenges and opportunities for promoting Austria as a destination for sustainable tourism? May I say that's already done. Uh, ecotourism, I think, is a big subject in Austria. Uh, I think it's depending uh, on our nature, on the Alps for sure. The mountains area are really important and they did a very good job. The real danger might be sometimes that we have too many tourists. Uh, that sounds strange, but if, if everything is overcrowded, uh, and uh, then it's a problem. And if you're listening, listening to the traffic uh, reports in the summer, uh, that the tunnels through the Alps are stuck and so on and so on, here you can see what the dangers are really. Now the third question is about cooperation in the Balkan region. Um, research and innovation are key drivers for the economic prosperity of countries. Now, do you regard this as a basis for cooperation among Balkan countries to further their development? We are trying now to, to create this. Uh, not too much has happened. Still it's necessary for professors and for students to go outside from the Balkans. Uh, so far we are creating some systems uh, on this, an exchange program, for example, it's named TEPUS, uh, Central European Education Program on the University Students, uh, to create this exchange. But even more important uh, is the uh, European Union strategy on the Danube region. Uh, here on different subjects, starting from shipping until business and so on and so on, uh, regional cooperation is done. And here it's done especially on science and research. Uh, I think biodiversity, for example, is one of the issues. What about water, the quality of water? Uh, here we are creating uh, groups of cooperation within the different universities uh, and institutes together. I think here we are on the way, uh, but we have to go quite a distance uh, in the future. Uh, it's a problem of money. Uh, there's some money available, but the conditions are not so easy to do, and it has to be controlled, that it is uh, fitting to the right things. Uh, but it's moving, for my feeling, sometimes too slow. Okay, thank you. Um, now, looking at cultural diplomacy, do you have any interesting concrete experience of intercultural dialogue and exchange from your hometown, Vienna? And in which ways do you think could cultural diplomacy as a two-way stream contribute to the successful integration of immigrants in Europe? I think my hometown uh, is an example of uh, the necessity of cultural diplomacy. Uh, I think uh, the number of inhabitants of Vienna uh, was going down. Uh, it is a city which was performed uh, around 1900 for two million inhabitants. 
I was vice mayor and this time the number of inhabitants went down, not because I was vice mayor, but it was a general development. Before 1989, we were coming closer to one million. Now, by the downfall of the Iron Curtain, and I regret to say also by the Balkan Wars, uh, the number of those coming from outside uh, in Vienna has increased. That's creating a lot of problems concerning cultural diplomacy, mutual understanding. Also the enlargement of the European Union created uh, the necessity of better understanding, antivising and so on and so on. We are doing also programs concerning mutual understanding, especially history has an importance because very often history is used uh, to create the argument we are better than the others uh, and so on and so on and a lot of uh, wrong messages uh, are done here. The best part of cultural diplomacy is arts. I think by arts, uh, people coming together. For example, I'm doing the so-called Gustav Mahler Youth Orchestra. Uh, it was created and it is still led uh, by uh, Claudio Abado. Uh, we have from 28 nations uh, members in these youth organizations, uh, in this youth orchestra. Uh, and we are doing two tournees every year, Easter time and summer. And here I have to say, the young people are coming together because by music, you don't need any translation. I think it is self-understandable and in this way they are coming closer together. For sure, we have also to do summer schools and so on and so on. Uh, now we are doing by foundations exchange of classes. Uh, this is a long way to go. Uh, I have to be quite uh, open. Sometimes politics is a real difficult subject. There's upcoming a kind of nationalism. I'm always saying it's more an egoism, uh, where in some countries it is said uh, that they, my nation is better than the others, which is a complete nonsense. I think so far we have a lot of open problems, especially in the Balkans. Not only pretty well known concerning Serbs and Kosovars, uh, but also I think uh, about Macedonia, state name, the Macedonians and the Greeks, uh, the problems of the minorities in the different countries and so on and so on. Here we have to do a lot of education and a lot of cultural diplomacy. It's a long way to go, but it's no alternative. We have to do it. Well, thank you for your time, Mr. Busak. It was an honor and privilege to have you here with us today. Was Thank you very much. It was a pleasure by me. Yes. Some very interesting insights, and I completely agree. I think, and um, we're talking about Vienna with the cultural diplomacy. You see it in Berlin as well that they really do need the with all the Turkish, yeah. and now I think with Romanians, people are. are but I think to be quite fair, you are right. Vienna, Berlin are good examples, and are also partly bad examples because we have also political powers here in Berlin, uh, but also in Vienna being against. Uh, yeah.